Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. The Chumba life is for everybody. So go to Chumbacasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Mutual, the world's largest network with more than 500 stations from coast to coast, presents that absolutely unrehearsed animal, vegetable, or mineral game, 20 Questions. And here's your man about questions, Bill Slater. <laughs> Give you 20 questions. Very briefly, this is the way we play the game of 20 questions. You listeners send in subjects for our experts here to identify by asking me not more than 20 questions. Now, if your subject is used on this program, you'll receive a beautiful, perfectly tailored crocodile pocket wallet through the courtesy of the Mark Cross Shop of Fifth Avenue, New York. But if our questioners do not get your subject in 20 questions, and sometimes they don't, you know, you win instead a grand prize, an exclusive traveling bag fashioned by Mark Cross. And so that you friends of ours at home there will always know what our experts are trying to guess, Our mystery voice will tell you what the subject is. A poster informs our studio guests. Naturally, we're not going to tell our questioners. Who are Fred Van Deventer, famous news analyst, Florence Renard, talented musician, Herb Palazzi, radio and motion picture producer, Johnny McPhee, our teenage student, and our special guest is the most popular man in the world tonight, Santa Claus! Oh, she's fine. Oh, that's wonderful. Hello, Johnny. How's everything at school? That's wonderful. Right? My mother-in-law is going over the rooftops on her broom. <laughs> <laughs> was that what I passed over Alaska? That was it. Oh, speaking of Alaska, Bill, I want to tell you I had to come around that way down here, and when I told them I was coming down to be in on 20 questions, they said we'll all be listening. Way up in Alaska, they're all listening. Up there in their igloos. Right, sir. Right, sir. <laughs> in their igloos. You're, you're busy this year, Santa? Oh, this has been a terribly, terribly busy year, Bill. A lot of good boys and girls this oh, year, Oh, huh? the boys and girls this year are passing all records. And so are some of the parents. <laughs> you like to play uh, 20 questions with us a little while, Santa Claus, and sort I'd of relax Drew. a little bit? I love Drew. Okay, let's get I going. I was watching right. your television the other night, and you were all wonderful. Well, we all thank you, Santa Claus. I hope you'll remember that to come Christmas Eve. I certainly will. <laughs> well, thank you. We've got to get in good with him. <laughs> Our first 20 questions subject of the evening was sent to us by Ellen Graham, who lives in McPherson, Texas. And because we're using it, she gets one of those beautiful, perfectly tailored crocodile wallets from the Mark Cross people on Stylish Fifth Avenue here in New York. This subject's an interesting one, and it's animal. This is the 20 questions mystery voice off stage in a soundproof room where the panel can't possibly hear me. Tonight's first subject is the hero of a very popular song. It's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Mystery Voice has told our friends at home, let the studio audience see it, Miss Shepard. So we all know what it is except you five. See if you can get it. Van? Is it a whole animal? It's a whole animal. Florence? A human being? No. John? Four-footed animal? It's a four-footed animal. Right. Herb? Is it a fur-bearing animal? Uh, I think it... Outer coating could be used for fur. Florence? Would it be of the deer family? It would be of that family. Would it be one of Santa Claus's reindeers? Uh, one of the half dozen? Mm-hmm. No. Eight. Santa? Would it be a little old Rudolph? It would be Santa Claus. <laughs> I'll tell you, Rudolph's nose is no redder than Santa's, though. No, it's quite red. Do you know, Santa, how Rudolph's nose got so red? Why, uh, there are many, many stories about that, Bill. What's yours before I tell you mine? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Santa, I don't nose. 
You don't know. I don't know. Well, you your know nose knows. <laughs> you know <laughs> well, maybe they just called him Rudy for short, and that switched into Ruddy, and Ruddy means red, and maybe maybe it came about that way. I don't know. Well, I thought it was because he was so inquisitive when he was a little fellow, he was always sticking his nose out the door, and he got nipped, you know, by the cold, cold Alaska weather. Oh, yes. Is that the way you got your nose so red, too, Sam? Well, it certainly has something to do flying down through those clouds and that atmosphere. <laughs> Hold up there, you know. Oh, I bet it is. Well, you're pretty hot, however, here on 20 Questions, Santa Claus, knocking that one off in such a hurry. Oh, that was Florence's good building up for me there. <laughs> she, she put it in the right family. All right, now let's see what you do with this one here. Martin Hagland of Venice, California, is going to find in his mail a perfectly tailored crocodile wallet from Mark Cross in New York. The subject is vegetable. This subject is one of those things you get for not being careful about where you park your car. That's right. It's a parking ticket. Now that they know at home, let the audience see the subject so that they'll know what it is, too. Did you say vegetable? Uh... Yes, I did, Van. And you can tell by the reaction from the audience this is going to be a rugged one. Go ahead, Van. Is it wood or a wood product? Yeah. Johnny? Is this made of paper? Yes, a form thereof. Van? Does it have any printing on it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Florence? Is it just one sheet of paper? One piece of paper or whatever it is? No, there are a lot of these things. No, but what I mean is, what we're after, is it on one sheet, even though there are a lot of them? Oh, yes. Charge for both of them. What was that last question? One, no, if, what, if the thing you were after was all on one sheet or whatnot. Johnny? Is it generally folded once over? Like well, a Christmas card? <laughs> no, I don't know how this is generally handled. I don't <laughs> think it's more often folded once over than not. Let's not charge him for that, Gary. I didn't tell him anything. Van? Is this, uh paper that has anything, uh, any particular significance for Christmas? No, it has no... <laughs> it has no particular Christmas significance. You have now used six questions. You have 14 left. John? Does it have a very direct uh, connection with financial transactions? <laughs> well, I should say fairly direct, uh, Johnny. Herb? Is it a legal piece of paper in any sense? Yes, it's legal. That's Johnny? Right. Do you write on it yourself? No. You don't. <laughs> Santa Claus? Can you uh, pay for Christmas presents with this legal tender, shall we say? You can't buy Christmas presents with this, Santa Claus, old you can't, boy. Uh... No. Florence? Well, is it any kind of a traffic violation ticket or something like that? Yes. A traffic ticket? Well, Parking ticket? A what? Uh, the last thing you said. Hmm? Parking ticket? Right. That is exactly it. I hope you're not speaking so knowingly from experience, Florence. Well, after they put parking meters in Princeton, I've had little experience yet. <laughs> what you laughing about? I Santa? never have that trouble. I just leave them right up there. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, it. You're doing very, very well tonight. You look awfully sharp, so I think we ought to try you with this one, see if we can't slow you down a little bit. It comes from Mrs. Dorothy Massey, who lives in St. John's. That's in the province of Quebec up in Canada. And the subject, I like it. It's animal. Subject number three is hiding in the shoes of our five questioners. It's the ten little toes of our five questioners. All right, they've been told at home. Let the studio audience see this one. Now take a careful look at it, audience, so that, we'll all know, so that we all know precisely what we're after. What's the category, Bill? The category is animal. Johnny? Is it a whole animal? No. Van? Is it part of a human being? Uh, it's uh, partly part of a human being. Mm. That mystifies everybody. Mm. Lawrence? Is it uh, fictional? No, it's real. It's real. Uh, Santa? Would it be my beard? No, no, it's not your beard, Santa, although that's a luxurious beard you're sporting this oh, year. Oh, yes, yes. Van? Uh, is what we're after above the shoulders? No. <laughs> no. Van? Is it below the waist? Yes. Cutting up the human anatomy now, aren't you, Florence? Well, is it uh, on the legs or the uh, feet or any part of that? Yes. Anatomy? Van? Is it toes? Yes. It's toes, and you have now used eight questions. You have 12 left. It gives you a fighting chance. And you say this is real? Oh, yes. Sure. Huh. I hope I'm not imagining things. <laughs> Herbert, you had your hand up. Took oh. it down. Yes. Florence? Well, are they the certain toes on people's feet that you want, like the big toe or the little toe or something? 
Well, it, it's... All the big toes or all the little toes, one or the other? Not all of them. <laughs> Part of them? <laughs> Part of the people, yes, and charge for it, Gary, old boy. Mm-hmm. That'll make us 11, won't it? 10? 10 left. Santa Claus. I don't think Would I learned anything. the big anything. toe? No. Van? Well, uh, are these on a large number of people? Well, these things you're after, I wouldn't call it a large number, no. Johnny? More than five people? No. No. Van? Is it the little toes we're after? It's little toes you're after. Florence? Well, are these uh, toes on specific people? Yes, ma'am. It must well, be let's... ours, then. Well, now, who is ours? All of our little toes. What? All of our little toes are the panels. Yeah, now, we'll give you a couple more questions to add them up. Oh, well, wait, there's, there's, uh... 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Not little. No, no. <laughs> Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, that's better. That's better. Well, my toes are all little, Bill. (laughs) I see. Well, I thought for a minute we had some funny-looking people up here. I was going to have a foot inspection like in the Army. So you got that in 19 questions. That came with one within two questions of stumping you. Maybe we'll have a little better luck later on. I I want to sort of relax now, and while we're getting ready to come at our questioners again. I have for you all at home another mutual note. For super quick action-crammed mystery adventure, hear Nick Carter, Master Detective, this Sunday over most of these stations. Nick Carter is part of Mutual's lineup of Sunday shows that are tops in listening to suit everyone. Since 1886, when the first Nick Carter story was printed and sold to the general public, this famous detective has delighted and amused everyone. In his radio adventures heard over Mutual since 1942, he's become one of the nation's great favorites. And despite his long history, Nick Carter is outstanding as a modern-day detective. Every Sunday when you join Nick Carter, you set out on an exciting trail of clues and deductions, of action and suspense which reach the heights of the mysterious. Nick Carter's trigger-fast mind provides his listeners with an opportunity to match wits with a master sleuth who solves crime bafflers with polished ease. So be sure to hear Nick Carter, Master Detective, this Sunday over most of these stations. And now back to 20 Questions, the game where you listeners and our theater audience are in on the subject, but all we tell our questioners is whether that subject is animal, vegetable, or mineral. Okay, Bill, let's have 20 questions. All right, now the first three subjects have been identified in very smart and short order, and let's see what happens now as we move a little bit deeper into the show. Dan Harston of Dallas, Texas, is going to find in his mail a beautiful, perfectly tailored crocodile wallet from the Mark Cross shop on Fifth Avenue in New York. He submitted an interesting subject, which is also animal. This is the 20 Questions Mystery Voice again, telling you at home what the subjects are. And this one is a neck in an expression. It's the neck in a rough neck. All right, they know at home. Let them see it here. I think we may cause them a little bit of difficulty this time. Okay, who has the first question? It's animal. Johnny? Is it a whole animal? No. Herb? Is it part of a living animal? Uh, no. Van? Is it part of a human being? Part of a human being. Florence? Is that human being fictional? In a form of fiction, yes. Van? Is it in prose fiction? Yes. John? A saying or an expression? In a saying or an expression, yes. Yes. Van? Is this part above the waist? Yes. Here we go, hacking the human anatomy again. Uh, Johnny? Beheading. Is he above the head? No, it's not above the head. Van? Is this uh, a visible portion of the body? I think I should say sometimes yes and sometimes partly. You said now that it's between the waist and the shoulders, haven't you? I don't think so. Well, you said it wasn't above the shoulders. I don't think he so. Didn't. I didn't say that. Nobody asked well, that. Well, you said it wasn't a part of the head. No, I didn't say that. Yeah, I, said, above, I said, is it above the neck? <laughs> and you said no. That's right. That. Well, then it's between the shoulders and it's between the neck and the waist, then, isn't it? Funny looking person. You figure it out. Figure it out yourself. Johnny? Is this a part of uh, either arm? No, this is not a part of either arm. Florence? Is it part of the neck? No, it's not a part of the neck. Herb? Is it the neck? <laughs> it's the neck. A neck? In an expression? Right. You get it in the neck? No. Nope. Charge for everything, Gary Stevens, old boy. Don't You've got 13 neck. used. You've got seven <laughs> left. This is going to be a fight. Van? Well, is this uh, the neck that you're not supposed to stick in a noose? <laughs> Gee whiz, what a line you've got. No, it's not that neck. Florence? Well, Herb just said, don't stick your neck out. Is that it? And sticking your neck out? 
Uh, you said that, didn't you, Herb? I said no and charged you for a question. No, you didn't charge me for no, that. No, didn't. Well, let's didn't. charge him for it, then. Let's yeah, not overlook we'll a chance to do that. Might as well be honest this close yeah. to Christmas. Johnny? The, does something happen to the object of this expression that he doesn't like? No. No. Van? Uh, how many questions left, please? You have uh, four left. I'd like to establish whether or not this is in a saying or an expression, and therefore I'll ask, is it in a saying? No. Three questions left. John? Does does the neck move? In the expression? Yeah. No. No. Two left, Van. Wouldn't be a dirty neck. (laughs) Ooh, what an uncleanly thought. No, it wouldn't be. Santa? Would it be the neck of the chicken? No, no, that's 20 questions. You didn't get it. So here goes the grand prize to Dan Harston of Dallas, Texas. He stumped you, and he gets, instead of the crocodile pocket wallet, he gets an exclusive traveling bag of imported English hide direct from the Mark Cross shop on Fifth Avenue in New York. And he stumped you with, you know? Well, well, I, I said rubber neck, but that moves. Mm-hmm. That's stretching it a bit too far. I didn't, I didn't say that. He did. Congratulations, Mr. <laughs> Harston. He stumped you with a rough neck. Oh. Mrs. James R. Vanderbilt, who lives in Providence, Rhode Island, is going to get a perfectly tailored crocodile wallet from the Mark Cross people for submitting this next subject, which also is animal. T'was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And that mouse that wasn't stirring is what the panel has to identify now. They now know at home. Let them see it in the studio here, our guests. Good look at it. Oh, it's a good one, isn't it? Uh, Johnny. Is this a whole animal? This is a whole animal. Herb? Is this animal alive? No. Van? Is it human? The animal's not human, no. Try it again, Van. Four-legged? Four-legged, right. Florence? Is it in fiction? A form thereof. Florence? Is it in poetry? Yes. Is it in uh, The Visit from St. Nicholas? Yes. Is this one of the reindeers? No. Oh. Want to stop for a little bit, Florence? Oh, I know. Try it, Johnny. Is it a mouse? Yep. Oh, yes. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. That's, That's the mouse, mouse you were after. Very, very good. <laughs> all right, all right. You've only been stumped once all evening long, but I am still in there fighting, this time with the help of K.G. Smith, who lives in Long Island City in New York, and he gets a perfectly tailored crocodile wallet of beauty direct from the cross shop on Fifth Avenue. And this subject also is animal. This subject is deflator mouse, and it's really a bat. It's also the title of the Strauss operetta, Deflate a Mouse. I know at home, let them see it here. Oh, oh, I should say. Here we go, Van. Is this a whole animal? This is a whole animal, right. Herb, is this a female by any chance? (laughs) Gee, I I really don't know, so I'm not going to charge you. (laughs) Oh, you don't. Johnny? Is this from the night before Christmas? This is not from the night before Christmas. Florence? Is this a four-legged animal? Uh, oh, baby. I don't think you would consider it a four-legged animal. Van? Is this animal native to the United States? They have them here. It's not exclusively native to the United States. Who has the next question? Uh, Van? Not not native, now. No. You all do some thinking over there. You see, it's tough sometimes to answer these questions, like whether this thing is four-legged or not. And yeah. I said, I didn't think you'd consider it. Matter of fact, we had a discussion here not long ago about the octopus. Somebody asked if it was a fish, and I said it was a scuttlefish. And somebody called me up from the museum and said it wasn't a fish at all. It was a mollusk. So you can't tell what's likely to happen. All right, let's see what we're saying. is over. But, yeah. <laughs> Recite tomorrow. I don't know any more about this question now. Though. Is this uh, animal as small as, uh, let's say, a rabbit? Oh, yeah. Florence. Who is this a sea animal? No, this is not a sea animal. No, a water animal. But, no. but it's, it's as small as a rabbit. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who has the next question? Try it, Van. Is, well, well is this uh, anything like a, an insect or anything like that? Well, it's not an insect. I'll tell you that. But what you mean by something that's like an insect, <laughs> the only thing I can think of that's like an insect is an insect. And it's now, uh, Florence, depends where you've been bitten. Worm? What'd you say? Any kind of a worm? No, it's no kind of a worm. Van? Is this as small as an ant? No, no. Johnny? Do we know whether this thing actually exists? 
I don't know whether you do or not. Does it? Uh, what we're after actually doesn't. Johnny? Is it in prose fiction? No, it's not in prose fiction. Van? Can this thing fly? Yes. Herb? Is it a bat? Yes. And is one particular oh. bat you're after? Yes. The bat in your oh, belfry. Oh. Florence? You got the bat? later man. What? The later man. Right! The later man. I'd say Florence is batting a thousand. <laughs> she sure came off with a bat She took the time. words right out of my mouth. He always says that. Took the flavor out of your well, mouth. Well, now, you see why I couldn't... <laughs> Florence, you see why I couldn't answer you on the question of four feet? Yes, yes. Books say two feet, two arms with the uh -huh. zingo stuff. And the wings. And the body and so on and so forth, <laughs> flying around. Yeah. Okay. I think I better change my attack now if I'm going to stump them more than once in this pretty sizzling evening that they're having. And Charles D. Wants of Silver Spring, Maryland is going to be my helper now, and we're going to send him a beautiful crocodile wallet from the Mark Cross shop on Stylish Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. And the subject uh, sent by Mr. Wants is animal. Let's see if our experts can name this group of Hollywood movie executives. The subject is the Warner Brothers. Unveil it for the audience, Miss Shepard, please. All right. Woo again, huh? Of course, Bill, I would like to say that Der, Der Flader Mouse in the opera is actually a man. Really? Oh, yeah. I didn't know whether it was a man or a woman. No, it's a man. You Dr. 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 Coste or Dr. Fauste or something like that. I forget. Okay. All right. This is animal. This is animal. I what often mother question? wonder whether I'm a man or a Flader Mouse <laughs> <laughs> around my house. What's your mother-in-law say? <laughs> well, let's mouse. get going on this uh, subject. Quit trying to rest on your loyal mm -hmm. laurels here, my friends. This subject is animal. Florence? Is it human? Subject is human. Van? Man? Partly. Van? Are there more than two? Yes. Yeah. Santa Claus, you've been pretty quiet. Yes, he... Uh, I'm having a wonderful he, time listening here. He's got his hat. And another thing. I keep wondering, what is the audience laughing at? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wonders that, except those of us who know. Hey, Johnny. That's why it's so much fun being out front. You're in on all the jokes. Up here, you know, you wonder why you're being laughed at. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Johnny? Are these men American? The, the persons involved are American. Van? Are they members of some particular organization? Well, yes, I think they undoubtedly are. I mean, is that the way we identify them? No. Charge for just one. Nope, no charge for both. Well, why? Uh, because you asked two questions. I gave you two answers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, there's no there's Christmas spirit in you. Comprise... Oh, I should say not. But this you're organization saying... comprise men and women? What organization? Well, this group that you're after. The group that you're after? Yeah, the group that I'm after. I thought you were after. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, uh, clean up the question. Let's have it. <laughs> oh, wasn't it clean when I started? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a group of men and women. Clean no, men and women. No, not a group of men and women. Is it a group of boys and girls? This is not a group of boys and girls. No. Florence? Do these people function at a particular time of the year? No, they function I mean, year more round. Than, more than any other. Van? Oh, I'd like to establish something. I asked if this was a man, and you said partly. That's right. And then, oh, all right, is this a large group of men? I wouldn't call it a large group. Charge gear. And a boy. <laughs> ten questions, ten left. Santa Claus. Would the subject of this question be, uh, you say, partly man? Does that mean the other half of the subject would be female? Not... Not necessarily, Santa Claus, although that's good logical thinking, but that isn't what I mean. No, they're all Herb, is this a father and sons? No, they're not fathers and sons. Johnny? Do we know these men by name? Yes. Mm-hmm. Van? Are they living? They are living. Let's see where we stand now. Fourteen, Gary? Six left? Hot dog. Florence? Are these men in, in any government? No, these are not men from the government. Van? And we've already established that they're not in the entertainment world, haven't we? No, we haven't. Well, are they? Yes. Now you have used 16. Four left. Van's the only hand up. Go ahead, Well, Van. you can call on me, you know. Go ahead. You gotta, oh, you are, are, they, are these people connected with this particular show? No. Three questions left. Santa. Are they a, a singing group? <laughs> no. No. We Two know. questions left. Florence. Haven't we established that the, the name is not identical with these people? Didn't Herb uh, ask? No. Johnny asked if we would know them by name, and I said yes. 
That's well, is their they... name all the same? Yes. Are they brothers? Well, wait just a second. Yes, they are, and that's 20 questions. Oh. Oh, isn't that a shame? I wouldn't have asked the last one if I'd known that was a 20. The I Marx would have brothers? taken a guess. What brothers would you have said, Florence? I would have said the Marx brothers. Mm-hmm. Well, your marks are just the are same. The, because they are the the Crosby brothers. brothers? Not the Crosby the Ritz brothers. brothers. The Ritz. First of all, let's sort of Smith relax brothers. here and award the grand prize to Charles D. Wants of Silver Spring, Maryland. He stumped you for the second time this evening, and instead of the crocodile wallet, he gets that beautiful exclusive traveling bag of imported English hide direct from the Mark Cross shop on Fifth Avenue, New York. He stumped you with the Warner oh. Brothers. Now, while we get squared away for our quickies, here for you all at home is another mutual note. Okay, Bruce. Mutual's three musketeers of the news, Gabriel Heater, Bill Henry, and Frank Edwards, who report to listeners every weeknight, have added a fourth member to their ranks to complete a full week of expert news coverage. Cecil Brown, veteran reporter, now brings you his commentary every Saturday and Sunday night. Every night, Monday through Friday, hear Gabriel Heater, the man whose colorful and authoritative manner of presenting the news has made him must-listening for millions. Later, Bill Henry skims to the top of the headlines in a five-minute capsule digest, and Frank Edwards comes to you with penetrating and thought-provoking analysis of events from Korea to Capitol Hill. Remember, Mutual is your network for news. Hear Gabriel Heater, Bill Henry, and Frank Edwards every weeknight, and Cecil Brown Saturday and Sunday nights over most of these stations. And now, back to Bill Slater. All right, now into our quickies. This Santa Claus, as you know, is where I race you against the clock instead of counting the number of questions. And the usual prizes will be given if your subject is used, you're all at home, and if you stump them, the usual prizes. Now let's move into our quickies. You start when I say on your mark, get set, go. When I say go, you're off. D.R. Ed Blum of Spokane, Washington, sent in our first quickie of the evening, and it's animal. Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. They know at home, let them see it here. Good look at it, audience. Okay. On your mark, get set, go. Van. Living American man? Part, part, No. <laughs> I'll say partly, though. Florence? Your answer is partly to that? Yeah. A group of men? No. Nope. A man and a woman? Yeah. Are they married? Yeah. Are they in the theater? Uh, not primarily. Are they Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus? Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus. <laughs> well done, Herb. Well done. Thank you, Santa. I was about to ask you, but I thought I shouldn't be so egotistical. I once referred to my beard, and that's too much. Too many to references to myself. <laughs> no, I think Mrs. you're very Santa. charming. She's wonderful, Bill, and she sent her regards. She, but she still remembers what you said about her three years ago. <laughs> oh, yes, and let's not repeat that, Mr. Claus. <laughs> no, no, let's no, not. No, it got me in bad. Uh, the only people in... The only person in the world, I think, that doesn't like Mr. and Mrs. Claus is old man Stalin himself. <laughs> yeah, it could very easily and be. And Santa's not going to visit him. Well, I hope not. <laughs> Trying to soften him up without making much headway. <clears throat> Mrs. Nellie Weatherby of Eureka, California, submitted our next quickie. See what you can do with this one. This one's mineral. The North Pole. Okay, let him see it. All right, panel, on your mark, get set, go. John? Is this got a Santa in it? No. Van? Is it manufactured? No. Herb? Is it some kind of snow by any chance? Well, that's part of it. Van? Wouldn't be the North Pole. Would be! That's where Santa Claus came from. <laughs> Our next quickie is from Mrs. M. Mora, who lives in New Orleans, Louisiana, and this one also is animal. Santa's reindeer. All right. Let them see it here. They know at home. <laughs> Try it. On your mark, get set, go. John? Human? Nope. Herb. Are these reindeer? Yep. Santa's eight reindeer? Yep, Santa's reindeer. <laughs> this is a good fellow to have in your corner tonight. I'm going to slow you down now. Our next quickie comes from Carl W. Rock of Davenport, Iowa, and it's mineral. A chimney. All right, let him see it. On your mark, panel, get set, go. Van? Is this snow? No. Is it manufactured? Yeah, in a sense. Johnny? No. No. Is it a... <laughs> <laughs> he said to have it. Florence. Is it in the night before Christmas? Oh, mentioned, but... Is it a building? It's partly. Johnny? The is, house is, is it igloos? Visits? No, no. no. Snow huts? Is it part, oh. part of a building? Yep. Is it a window? The, the chimney. A chimney, chimney Santa! Of course! <laughs> Thanks a lot to you, Santa Claus, for dropping in on us tonight. A happy Christmas to you, sir. Now, friends, we'll be back this way again next week, so be sure to send in your 20 questions subjects. 
You just mail your subjects, one to a postcard, please, to 20 questions, post office box 142, New York 46, New York. All selections will be made by our judges, and in case of similarity or duplication, the one bearing the earliest postmark will be chosen. All entries become our property. 20 Questions is brought to you by the world's largest network, serving more than 500 stations from coast to coast. Tune in again next week when Fred Van Deventer, Florence Renard, Herb Palazzi, Johnny McPhee, and our guest star try to identify the subjects you submit. Next week's guest will be the noted stage and screen actor, a dramatic name of distinction, Mr. Walter Abel. Now, this is Bill Slater speaking for all of us here on 20 Questions, wishing all of you at home there a very merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year, and saying good night now for 20 Questions. Good night, Merry Christmas, everybody. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car, before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.